Yo, what's up? Today we're gonna check out the hybrid reverb. We're gonna see a bunch of techniques with it. Most of them using it as a delay effect, which turned it into one of the most powerful delays in Ableton. Let's check it out. Okay, first one, um, we're gonna load the hybrid reverb. And before I do this, I just have a loop here, just a drum loop. Let's drop to the hybrid reverb. Now, first tip I would say is to use the send knob whenever you need. Uh, this will allow us to use a return track or kind of a send effect directly inside the hybrid reverb loaded up as an insert effect directly on the track. So let's, uh, first, let's first of all set it up. The hybrid reverb have two engines. We're gonna, here we can decide how we use them, if we use only one of them or in combination. Let's just use right now the convolution reverb and we can choose, let's listen to this. Let's choose a different impulse response. Nice, let's take down the dry wet. Sweet. And let's turn this into kind of a delay by synchronizing the pre-delay and we leave it on 2 16th, which is an eighth note. Nice, which is cool, but let's only turn it on on like specific snares. So I'm gonna click on the send knob, right click, show automation. In Ableton Live 12, we already, we have the ability to see both the clip and the device. So it's much easier, but in Ableton Live 11 and prior, you just right click, show automation, it takes you to that clip envelope. Or if you're in the arrangement, of course, you just do automations regularly. Let's take the send all the way down. I'm gonna take my pencil with B and just turn it up. Let's do every other snare, something like this. Maybe at the end, we can also do this. So now it will only turn on or send to the reverb on these specific uh, times. Nice, so we're adding more movement, more density into the loop. Really great way of using this momentary effects or dub effects, uh, old school kind of term. So super awesome stuff. All the presets that we build in today, you can download from the blog post. I'll share the link in the description. Sweet, send inside the hybrid reverb. Let's check out the next one. Okay, next one, we're gonna explore the size parameter. So I'm gonna jump to our next loop. Let's click on it so we can see it. I'm gonna turn off the reverb, let's play it. Nice, and with the reverb, this is a function as a delay now and very kind of like color delay. Let's check this out. Let's take down the dry wet. Nice, so let's see how to set it up. I'm gonna turn this off. Let's load a new hybrid reverb and let's set it up. First, we're gonna again use just the convolution section. So we're gonna choose convolution here. In this case, we used a category textures and there's uh, some delays already here, tape delays. So let's choose uh, this one, which we can see it's already a delay. Nice. Now let's make it a delay by taking our pre-delay, synchronizing it, we'll keep it eighth note. And now we can even add feedback, like a true delay effect. Excellent. Now the biggest thing here is the size, which gonna emulate different size, uh, virtual sizes for this convolution river, for this space. Uh, and if we take it down in this case, it's just gonna make it tighter, a bit higher pitch, more filtered or, or high pass filtered. And let's listen actually 100, this is 100 again. And let's take it down all the way to 20. Okay, much tighter in our case because of the delay, but also high pitch and high, uh, high pass filtered. We can even go uh, above 100, all the way up to 500 for all sorts of sounds, deep reverbs. Nice. In this specific example, I also expanded the stereo image. We turned on, we made everything much more uh, lo-fi, kind of degraded the quality by emulating lower sample rates. We monitored the bass, although not ne really necessary in this case. I uh, took down the dry weather a tiny bit. And I think I also went to the EQ section and also emphasized the mid frequencies here, the high mid frequencies. Nice, let's go back to 20. Sweet, super awesome, colorful delay. 
very powerful, even though hybrid reverb, probably one of the most powerful delays in Ableton. Let's check out the next one. Okay, for this one, we're actually using a reversed reverb or reverse delay. Let's uh, listen to it first without and with. Nice. Now, if you ever used uh, the Convolution Reverb Pro, if you have Ableton Suite, you can download this for free. Uh, it's a great reverb, just the convolution section of the hybrid reverb, but it also has a lot of different impulse responses, which are essentially audio files. If I go here into the IRs, we'll go and we can listen to them. These are the impulse responses. And we can drag them into our convolution, into our hybrid reverb and create all sorts of new reverbs with it. You can make your own custom files, anything. It's really amazing. You can do convolution layering, which is a whole cool uh, other technique for sound design. What's cool about the convolution reverb is you can go under the shape tab and reverse it. We can, we don't have this option in the hybrid reverb, unfortunately, but what you can do is I can take this clip, I'm gonna click and hold and jump to the arrangement view. Let's drop it here, let's zoom out. Let's go back to arrangement, we don't need this. I'm gonna select one of the snares, command E to crop it, let's delete the rest, R to reverse, I mean R, you know what I'm talking about, sorry, my R is non-existent because of my accent, R, if that's any better, to reverse, and I'm going to right click and crop clip. Nice, now I'm just going to drop this into our hybrid reverb, and here we have our reversed reverb. Let's go back to the session, I'm going to launch this clip again. And again, if you play with the size, we'll give you different timing pitch and filtering. Nice, that's awesome. Uh, so reverse delay, reverb, really cool. Just uh, reverse something and put it as the impulse response. Uh, in fact, if you take the size down and all the way to 100, and we'll choose a different one, this can also be function as a filter. Okay, so size all the way down, 100% way, choose a cool IR, or just drag something it's quite endless. So awesome stuff, let's move on. Okay, now that we explored some techniques with the convolution section of the hybrid reverb, let's jump to the algorithmic section. We have five different algorith algorithms here. They're all quite amazing. I would say the dark hole is the most normal one. Uh, the other ones we can kind of mess around with and create some really unique stuff. We'll start with the quartz. Uh, so here I selected only the algorithm, and we're going to have the quartz. Nothing else is really set up. I took, I did took the pre-delay down, uh, so we don't really use any pre-delay right now. I'm also going to load a keyboard, uh, just so you can see what I'm playing with my MIDI controller. This is only for display. Let's clear it. Only for display, so nothing really... Just so you can see what I'm playing. Let me arm the track. Uh, so we can already hear a delay going on, but that's the quartz delay, uh, quartz reverb. Okay, I I'm going to load this. Again, you can, uh, this preset I love, I use it all the time. I love this type of kind of being between reverb and delay. And again, you can download all these presets in the link in the description of the video. Let's create a fresh one so we can explore more this really cool quartz uh, algorithm, hybrid reverb. So first of all, uh, let's choose just the algorithm. We're going to change it to quartz. Quartz, by default, it's a really nice, just reverb. Really nice reverb. But it is based on a very sparse delay system, ecosystem. So I'm going to take down this fusion all the way down. Let's also take the damp and the modulation so we can hear it. And now we can start hearing some of these delays. The decay can function as uh, essentially feedback almost, we can call it. So less repetition or more repetition. If it's going and I'm changing the parameters of size, we can hear the kind of gradually change. So you can do some cool uh, sound effects as well with this. Let's take this down. Let's take the size up. You can hear the delays are much more 
separated. Same with the distance, you can play with that to create all kinds of irregular times. Beautiful delays. Uh, and again, if we take the diffusion, we can turn it back into a reverb or anything in between. Beautiful stuff. Quartz algorithm, don't ignore it when taking the diffusion down because it's just an amazing uh, irregular timing delays, uh, almost like a tap delay that you can play around with and kind of make it into or delay, reverb, or somewhere in between. This algorithm reminds me some of the, somewhat of the Supermassive from Valhalla, which is amazing free reverb delay. So kind of reminds me of that uh, in that sense. Quartz algorithm, don't ignore it. Let's check out the next one. Okay, I'm going to turn it off. Okay, uh, I'm, I turn off the reverb. Right now we have the same thing, just a piano. I also added a glue compressor with the soft clipper on. This is important, any limiter, clipper, whatever it is. Uh, because what we're going to do now is we kind of emulate kind of this uh, tape loops almost. Kind of like tape loop-esque. Uh, so check this out. I love this technique. It's super fun, super awesome. And allows you to create amazing uh, kind of tape loop soundscapes. So uh, I'm going to actually delete this. We're going to make our own. Uh, but you have the preset you can download. And you see me on Ableton Live 12 right now. You might not be on Live 12 quite yet, but the presets are good for Live 11. I made them with Live 11, okay? Sweet. Uh, so let's uh, again choose just the algorithmic reverb. Now in this case, we're going to change the vintage control as we play the sound. Vintage control emulates the grading of the sample rate and beat depth. Uh, so check what we can do here. First of all, I'm going to put it on Prism algorithm. This is a very artificial uh, noise-based algorithm. Uh, this is the only one that I found that doesn't make this kind of like spring style reverb noises when you change this. It's changed it quite smoothly. So that's the only one I found uh, out of these five. Nice. I'm going to freeze it. Freeze meaning that it's going to freeze the tail. So if I play a note and freeze, it's going to hold it. I'm also going to do freeze in, which we're going to accept new notes. So let me play a chord here. And now I'm just going to hold it. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to unfreeze. Let me bring the size all the way up. Let's freeze again. I like the size all the way up. It's much uh, softer. Nice. Now we said that the vintage, if we change it, is going to emulate the grading of sample rate and beat depth. If you go up, it's going to up sample. Of course, you go down, it's going to down sample or emulate that. So if I change that, so to change the pitch. So that means that I can add more notes and go to a different vintage setting. Add a few more notes, let's add some low ones. And go. And now it fills it up. Let's go even lower. Add some high notes here. And go back. Let's go even super low, add here a few. Love it. Let's expand the stereo. Amazing. Now, it might continue increasing the volume, so that's why we put the glue compressor there. So watch out as you start adding more and more layers. As you leave it, it might add. Just watch out, be safe, add a limiter or something after that can uh, stop it from going overboard. So this is using the PRISM algorithm while adding notes in freeze mode and changing the vintage control to get all these kind of crazy tape loop-esque kind of soundscapes. I love this. Yeah. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next. Okay, for the next one, I just have a default wavetable here with a sine wave. Nice. I made a rack, so we have one chain that is dry, one chain that is this shimmer. Uh, we're going to use right now just a hybrid reverb to see what it is. We set the algorithm to shimmer reverb. This is essentially a collection of echoes that are also getting pitched up, creating this beautiful kind of sparkly uh, type of sound, which can be great as a layer. 
uh, but you can do a lot with. So first of all, I put it on shimmer. You can set here the semitones in pitch. So we can also go down. Okay, the size will matter how fast it comes after. Let's go up. Okay, nice. So this comes a bit after. Diffusion will make it more into a reverb. Still with that shimmer kind of going up. What I did is we just uh, combined it with other effects like the pitch hack, which is essentially another grain delay, just allows you to pitch the delays. In this case, we also can reverse them. And this is the feedback. So together, getting these beautiful sparkles that I love personally. And then we diffuse it more with another reverb, just the default Ableton reverb. Love jamming with it. Uh, so this is the shimmer reverb, combined with other shimmering things. You can also do this with the grain delay. Uh, I love it. I'll share this rack so you can drop it on anything, pianos, anything. It's, it can sound beautiful. Just an extra layer of shimmering. Sweet. Next one. Okay, for the last one, I also have a sine wave here. In this case, let me turn off the bit repeat. Uh, we're going to create a glitch delay uh, or a glitch reverb. So first of all, I have a reverb here. It is have a delay in it with eighth note with feedback. We're using the tides algorithm. The tides algorithm uh, adds a modulation onto the reverb. So let me cancel this uh, so we can hear it. I'm going to make it pretty wet. And let's slow down the modulation. Let's make it mono, a uh, square wave so it's obvious, and all the way. So here we go. We can hear that LFO modulation. Sweet. Um, let's uh, bring it to be faster. Let's modulation. Stereo. Nice. Now, I do have Ableton LFO here that uh, modulate this vintage control we just used for the tape loops. Let's add more. And then we hear the feedback also. I didn't turn down the feedback button. So in the background, we get this uh, kind of lo-fi glitches because it's changing the vintage. But I also added a bit repeat here. Uh, the color limiter is just a limiter. comes with the creative extension, just like the pitch hack. You can download it for free. I do have a bit repeat with a custom LFO. I will link it. Check out the blog post, the link description with all the presets and stuff. This is a free Max for Live device I will link, which allows us to go to the binary, meaning on off, um, and have it percentage of how much should it be on, which I love this option. I map this to the repeat and I cancel the triplets and added some variation. So now every now and then it just creates these random glitches. Uh, which is beautiful. I love it. Let's just play for that. Here we go. and we could go on forever and jam. Love playing with this type of stuff. Again, I will put it in a rack, save it, and you can download it. Uh, check out the link uh, in the description. So those were some hybrid reverb techniques. Do not ignore this extremely powerful uh, effect, which is not only a reverb, as you can see, it's also one of the best delays Ableton has to offer. I'll catch you next time. You